All right. So today's video is on the Piet's 426 fuse. This is sort of what it looks like. Once again, we'll turn it around and it's a cutaway. Um, there's a couple of things that are not quite right on it, but it's the best I could do. It's a lot bigger than obviously the original is supposed to be. Once again, helps with clarity, but the main reason is the parts are too small to 3D print properly. I'm going to try to show you what they are, just so you have a sort of idea here. You would have your end cap with a ball bearing that's inside. It's usually bigger than this, but I obviously couldn't get it the right size and have it move. Then you've got a funny little cap that has a cutout in it for the piece that you're going to see in here. The piece in green there. This is just a spacer. Alright, so then you have your setback piece right here. Your firing pin is right down the middle here. Your other part, which I guess you would consider it a guide, in front of the firing pin in orange here, you've got split color rings, which is just two halves of a ring, I guess you would. In yellow here, you would have, I've set it up, it's basically the holder, and inside that would be the primer. Then you have that just as in the first one or the 425 that you have here. It's a uh, larger primer. And then you have a spacer collar, which you could see here. The uh, When it's inserted in the Piet, the uh, cortex or cordex lines up with that. Anyways, I'm gonna have to remove these because you can't the springs are too strong for this to actually work. But you have, as you see here, a larger spring. And between the blue piece and the yellow piece, you've got a smaller spring or a less strong spring represented by just a piece of wire here. This is free to move. Set the set of springs and all this with the spring here is pushing down on it, holding it back. <clears throat> As you see, firing pin extends right out to here. It does go a little bit higher, I think, in reality, but <clears throat> I'm working on pictures. I'm working using pictures, so it's not quite right. All right, what I'm going to do is remove the springs here and then. Uh, I'll show you how this thing actually works. All right. So this is it without the springs. You had a large spring here, the setback spring, and you had a small spring that was around here. I'm trying to make sure this stays where it's supposed to. Unfortunately, this is probably going to move. And it sits like that. All right. If you drop this fuse, there's not a problem with it. It's got the safety on it, the firing pin can't hit the primer that's in here due to those split color things that are in there. And that's held in place by the blue piece, which is held there with the spring, like I said. So there's a ball bearing that fits perfectly in here and right up against the firing pin. So there is no movement in the firing pin. So now you fire the piat and the acceleration is able to overcome the setback spring so what happens is this piece if i could get it to move back slides all the way back and i'm gonna try to get it to do this but i don't think i can and once i do it might be too difficult to take it off again but this Slides all the way back. Yeah, I don't think 
get it right to go to the back. I'll just pull it apart. This whiting glued because I wasn't sure I could get this thing to work like that. Alright. So they said that part's there. Get all the working parts out of it. I'll put it back together for the last little bit. So you have this holding this basically like that on acceleration. This comes all the way back. This stays put. So I'll pull this off right now. This goes against the spring all the way back and clicks over the edge on this. Now that that basically looks like this on acceleration, it's now locked in place, which means the spring that was in between is also locked in place. <clears throat> I'll put it back together and we'll go back to what it's supposed to do next. All right, now at this point, mind you, the ball bearing is supposed to be right up against the right up against the firing pin right now. So you're going to see it's a little bit different from what's happening here. Now that that spring, the bigger spring, is locked in, the small spring that was here is able to actually push in flight. So we had the initial acceleration which locked this piece back and now in flight this piece is pushed by the spring. If I could do this with two hands it would be nice but I'll try to do it like that. Okay. Now the whole piece here, so the green and the blue locked together, is pushed by the spring that connected it. That was weaker than the other one that's now able to exert pressure. So it gets pushed upwards by it. And now as you see, the spring is holding this whole piece up, and the deceleration of the piet bomb is keeping the firing pin forward like that, because obviously there's no rocket or anything in it, so it's not being kept. And as you see, this is free now. The whole firing pin is loose in there because the two little collars have fallen free. And the only thing keeping these things separate is that tiny spring that has just pushed it all forward. So now it's free flying to the target. As it impacts the target, one or two things will either happen. Well, they both pretty much happen at the same time. But hard targets will crush this tip, which will push in the ball. And as that does that, it's able to hit the primer. At the same time, this is moving forward. So if this moves forward or this crushes back, it doesn't matter really. They're both going to cause the same thing to happen, which is the detonation of the primer that's here, which then ignites this one here, which then ignites the bomb. This is a much more sensitive fuse, as you can imagine. Um, regardless if it hits a large target, like a heavy, like a tank or whatever, this is going to set off the, um, the primer in it. And if it hits a soft target, the movement of this going forward is still going to set it off. So both ways you're going to have in, uh, detonation. That also means if it's a glancing blow on here because of the shape, 
that ball bearing is still going to push back on the firing pin and it's still going to go off so it doesn't have to be a completely direct hit so it's a much more sensitive fuse also slightly more dangerous the problem danger wise is rough handling in its unfired position it's completely safe problem is sometimes you'd airdrop these and parachutes wouldn't open completely so the bomb basically is landing or the fuse is landing gonna hit the ground and that speed is gonna mimic basically being launched from the pit so it's gonna do this it's gonna lock the setback spring and basically put this in its arm position now if this is in its arm position and you fired out of your piet as you could tell it's in the arm position and you fired out of your piet what's going to happen is this is going to get pushed back and it's going to set off your primer this ball is weighted so it's going to come back and do the same thing. Everything's going to push on this firing pin. It's going to set off the primer, set off the, the boosting primer, I guess you would call it. And then that would set off your Piet bomb while it's still in the tray on your Piet. Obviously, that's not a good thing. People get killed, people get injured by it. And to the point where they mention not to basically to condemn any ammunition that's been dropped airdropped any fuses that have been airdropped because the fuses are not stored in the ammunition it's stored in a container attached to the tail on the ammo before you arm it for battle you will basically be opening up the con popping the container off the tail opening it up removing this installing it on the front of the bomb and then it's ready for use as I said you anyone witnessing a, an airdrop that didn't go well would be uh, would have to mention it so that they could condemn all the fuses just so that they wouldn't be in the ready position and uh, which would basically fire if dropped and would fire if actually fired out of the launcher Um, I didn't mention this in the other video, but obviously you can see there's an indent here. There's only one way to install this fuse into the launcher. Uh, the 425, the shape of it, obviously means people were able to would have been able to install it backwards. Um, it's not visible on here, but they had a safety ring that was just in the front here. Went around the whole thing, and it prevented you from installing it backwards it would only install one way so that's how that's the only safety that was on this thing it's the only one it really needed this one here obviously the safeties are the setback spring and the whole setup here and if you had a problem with that airdrop or rough handling it could cause an explosion on the Piet itself, which would not make you very popular, and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about it usually. So that there is the uh, more complex, but much more uh, sensitive, and more likely to actually impact and detonate on pretty much anything you fired it at. He said this did replace the other one, made it obsolete, and it did make the Piet much more useful, since you could also hit the ground, even if it's soft ground, and most likely set off the the bomb still. Um, that being said, any bombs that were found that weren't detonated, that had this fuse on it, were to be blown up in position 
apparently you were not supposed to pick them up because of how sensitive it is. Um, once it's in its position like this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was clear enough for you. And I hope it explains the two types of fuses that are on the Piet. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope you appreciate this. Have a good one.